I'm going to do a DNA extraction using the DNAZ plant mini kit. I'm going to be using a Cosma leaf which has been dried in silica gel. The first step that I need to go through is breaking up the uh, structure of the leaf and getting through the cell walls that the enzymes I use in the lysis stage of my extraction can get into the cell. When we do this in class we'll be doing it using a mortar and pestle. You'll add just about one small leaf's worth of material into your mortar and pestle and then we'll cover it with a small amount of liquid nitrogen and then you're going to uh, grind your leaf up. When this happens a white cloud of steam coming up from the liquid nitrogen which will make it hard to see but what will be happening underneath that steam is that the liquid nitrogen will be boiling. Once you've done uh, crushing your sample you'll end up with a very fine powder and you're going to use a clean spatula to scrape everything down into one part of the bowl, scoop it up and into a labelled microcentrifuge tube that you have prepared in advance. Now I've disrupted my tissue sample and have a small amount of dry crushed leaf material in my labelled microcentrifuge tube, add 400 microliters of AP1. Using the blue pipette set to 040 or 0.4 of a mil. The pipette up slowly so that I don't get any splashing within my pipette tip. I'm going to add 4 microliters of RNAs A. So I need to use the yellow pipette that has the more tapered end. Now as we saw with the PCR, 4 microliters is not a lot of liquid, so you need to check that you've actually got some in the tube. And yep, even though that looks like hardly any, that's 4 microliters and it's absolutely enough. So that can go in. Here I'm just touching the tip of the pipette to the inside of the tube to make sure I've got no droplets coming out on my tip. Now that I've added those, I'm going to vortex this to mix them, incubate it at 65 degrees for 10 minutes. Throughout the incubation period, take the tube out of the incubator and invert it two or three times throughout that 10 minutes. Carefully remove the tube, touching only the plastic and not the plate. And make sure the cap is on. Under high temperature, these caps can pop open. And one, two, three, and then back down. My sample is now done incubating. I gave it a last vortex and then a very quick spin in the mini spin to make sure that any material that got stuck to the top of the tube had now been pulled down into the bottom and everything was within the lysis solution. To add 130 microliters of buffer AP3, so I need to use the yellow pipette that has the more blunt end. Set this to 130. To give these a very quick vortex and then I'm going to incubate it on ice. I'm now going to centrifuge it at maximum speed for five minutes. So for our machine that means 14,000 RPM. I now have my sample out of the microcentrifuge tube. You can see I've got quite a strong pallet built up on one side and that pallet is on the same side as my hip. Okay, so my next step is to transfer the lysate or the liquid portion of the sample into a, a QI shredder. The aim is to filter out all the sort of bigger bits of material from our sample. And again, I have a spin column component and I have a collection tube. Using a blue pipette, transfer over my sample. Notice I'm holding it so that the hinge end is to my left and I'm placing the tip of my pipette down the opposite side. Hopefully I just wrap the pallet as little as possible. At this stage we aren't going to panic too much if I do suck up some of the pallet. I'm now going to centrifuge this at 14,000 RPM for two minutes. 
My sample is now out of the centrifuge. In some cases you'll see a very, very tiny pellet has formed in the collection tube. So what I need to do is take a clean micro centrifuge tube, throw out the top portion of our tube and keep the bottom part. Using a yellow pipette, transfer this liquid into this tube. I expect there to be 450 microliters, so I'm going to have to go back in a couple of times to get it all. But by using the smaller yellow pipette rather than the blue pipette, I'm less likely to accidentally suck up the pellet that I have in this tube because I don't have as wide an opening for the pellet to go up into. To my sample, I'm now going to add 675 microliters of buffer AW1, a blue pipette. And because this pipette doesn't have a fourth digit, I'm going to have to use the uh, lines along the bottom here to get the five. So here I've positioned it between the seven and the eight. Buffer AW1. Into my sample, and I'm going to mix by pipette. The two liquids, you can kind of see them interacting with each other and it kind of looks slightly thready. So I'm going to mix several times just to make sure that sort of thread-like appearance has disappeared. I'm now going to transfer this mixture into a spin column. You'll notice that while the uh, shredder column that we used earlier was purple, this spin column is white. The full volume of our sample will not fit into the top of our spin column, so I'm going to do this step twice in 650 microliter lots. Using the blue pipette set to 065, I'm going to transfer in what will turn out to be approximately half of our sample to the top of our spin column, and I'm going to centrifuge this for one minute at 8000. I now have my sample out of the centrifuge. You can see that the fluid has flowed through to the bottom. This time I want to keep the top where my DNA is secured in the filter and I want to throw out the bottom. Tip the fluid out rather than get a brand new bottom. If I forget and accidentally throw the tube in the rubbish, it doesn't matter too much. The reason I'm repeating this step, there is no difference between what I've just thrown out and what is about to be added. So I don't need to replace the tube in order to prevent contamination. So again, using the blue pipette set to 650 and gently pipetting out the last of our sample. Quite often the second batch will uh, have a little bit of air bubbles because there won't be a full 650 microliters. And again we're going to centrifuge this for one minute at 8000 rpm. Right, so we've put that through the centrifuge a second time. This time I am going to put my spin column into a new collection tube. lifting up, giving a little twist to break the suction between the two, and into the new tube. I'm now going to uh, go through the wash step, uh, set my pipette to 500 microliters, and I'm going to add a W2 into the top of the spin column, lid goes on, pipette into the trash, and I'm going to centrifuge this for one minute at 8000 rpm. I now have that out of the centrifuge, pip the contents of my collection tube into the waste and connect the top back with the bottom and I'm going to add a second wash of AW2, again 500 microliters. This second wash with AW2, we're going to centrifuge at a higher speed, so we're going to do 14,000 rpm for 2 minutes.